Harold's the only guy that I know that if a woman saw him at night on the sidewalk, they'd run toward him. <laughs> they'd be like, this eight-year-old is lost. I need to get them home. Oh yeah, keep it going for two girls, one sippy cup, everybody. Oh. He just kind of pulled ahead just by a little bit. This was one of the tightest, best battles that I've seen in a long time. This was pretty good, so tight, but I gotta give it to Max. Max looks like his safe words are, do you know who my father is? <laughs> Matt's wife never comes to any of his shows, mainly because she doesn't want to get disappointed by another five minute performance. Mike is in a play about vampires and he's actually a natural in it, guys. He's so good because he already sucks so much. No. This is ridiculous. Who wants, like, damn, if they don't got each other, who do they have? I mean, honestly, this is bad. Look at these two underage boys. How are you guys doing? Let's fucking, oh, let's catch a case tonight. Have you guys decided who is going first? Okay, Harold's going first. It's gonna be seven jokes each. Everybody at the same time, roast on three. One, two, three. Roast! He needs the mic. Thank you, sir. Uh, what's up, everybody? How we doing? Um, hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. It, it kind of sucks because like any roast I have on Harry will also automatically apply to me because <laughs> we're we're pretty much the same person. Uh, but the only difference we really have is uh, he went to D three college for lacrosse and uh, I couldn't find anyone that gave a fuck. So <laughs> uh, it's a all right. It's a university technically. So all right. Uh, Harold looks like he has to call timeouts while fingering women because his forearms cramp. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all right. You can laugh. Yeah, that's fine. That's yeah. Wow. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> that's all right. That's cool. That's cool, man. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna remember that one. Harry, uh, Harry brags about being 5% Jewish. It's true. But he's not even circumcised. <laughs> this is true, it's true. I feel like you gotta get, if you wanna put a, a yarmulke on that head, you gotta get rid of the yarmulke on that head first, you know? <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of yarmulke down there. All right. All right, uh, Harold looks like a bad boy who likes skating. Yeah, figure skating. Get it? Because he looks gay and he's got a feminine physique. <laughs> yeah, we're both the same. Thank you, Robot. Yeah, I know. I, every joke I wrote for myself, I was like, fuck, it's just me. Yeah. Uh, Harry, he's got a lot of sharp features. He's just not a sharp person. Um, <laughs> Harry, Harry, looks like, Harry looks like if a girl invites him over, he packs a lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Sometimes they don't have the right thing, dude. All right. Harold's the only guy that I know that if a woman saw him at night on the sidewalk, they'd run toward him. <laughs> they'd be like, this eight-year-old is lost. I need to get them home. <laughs> I, carry a I carry a compass on me for a reason. Um, Harry, Harry will fall madly in love with a woman after only texting her for three days. So true. That's so true. <laughs> and it's a coincidence because women fall madly in love with blocking him after three days of texting him. <laughs> That's just like objectively true. <laughs> All right. Uh, Harold's got greasy hair. I would recommend head and shoulders, but I'm pretty sure you have to have shoulders. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Harry's got a joke about Harriet Tubman's ass. It's true. It, it's fat. He, 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 he likes to make the audience think. Um, <laughs> you know. And it, it's honestly, it's, it's a cool joke. Like, if you want to see it, you can just go on YouTube and you can look up not that great 10 minute set <laughs> on YouTube in Harry Meredith. 
And here's the thing. I know we like to joke around. Everything I said in that was 100% yeah. true. That is, that is like, comment, subscribe, smash that notification bell. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Harold owns a gun. That's just true. Yeah, I don't know how he convinced someone to sell him a gun, but I assume it involved him standing on another kid's shoulders in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were the kid. Um, You're welcome. Was the last joke? One more. All right. Um, Harry, I know we got. We should probably get out of here. I know we, we've got a mammoth and a saber-toothed tiger waiting for you outside, so you can escape the ice age. <laughs> <laughs> you said the song. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Harold is the kind of guy that would never say the N word. Unless he was playing Tony Hawk Pro Skater and he botched a kickflip. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> That's all right. There it is. Oh, no, I have one, one more. We have one more. We have one more. We have one more. And this is a really... All right. Harry, uh, Harry looks like an Amish kid that got kicked out of the religion because they caught him doing TikTok dances. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dude. Uh, this is not gonna do well. Uh, <laughs> doesn't Harold look like he'd make a really good Greek slave boy? <laughs> can't you can't you see him wafting a giant leaf over Pythagoras as he figures out the triangle? <laughs> Whatever. That, We're that's done. the We're, one. Funny, holy shit! Wow! Oh my god! Dude, what a great opening battle. I appreciate it. That was amazing. Dude, great job. Dude, thank you both for taking time away from your Minecraft YouTube channel to do this. That was awesome. <laughs> Let's start it off with Stephanie Robertson here. Uh, you know, uh, fucking just, Joe is texting his side piece right now. So we're going we're gonna to start with Stephanie. What is going on? What did you think about these two boys? Yeah, I think they're I think they're so cute. I could use both of your bodies to pick popcorn out of my teeth. That's nice. That's real fun. I also wanted to just say uh, congrats on making it out of Diddy's mansion safe. I want to to the both of you. I'm glad you guys could be here tonight. Um, I, I love the both of you so much. That was such a fun battle. And a little inside scoop for the audience: uh, they filled in for a battle that dropped out last minute. So give it up for them. That's right. Those are my guys right there. They fill in for us whenever whenever we need, and they, and they fucking they kill it every time. So uh, thank you so much. I have to give it to Harry, though. Harry, you just had a... I know, it's... Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's Harry versus Harold. Like, it's so... Um, but Harry in blue, yes. Uh, <laughs> it's the one with the lacrosse team looking yeah, allegation yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. thing. Okay, lacrosse team, one point. Give it up for Harry. That's him. Joe. They were able to fill in because they never get booked. So it worked out That's <laughs> true. very well. Uh, both of them were great. I, uh, it's really tough for me. I, I think Harry definitely had the joke of the night. Um, but you know, Harold bums me cigarettes a lot. So <laughs> I I'm steal giving, them from my I'm parents. I'm giving the so. edge to Harold. So. OK, Harold, what? Oh, this is a bullshit. This that bullshit. This that bullshit. Here's the thing. I don't even know the, the other Harry. I don't even know who that nigga is. Yeah, the blonde. Here's the thing. My hero that I already know was already up 20 points on my scoreboard. <laughs> it's bodies, it's comedy. We don't give a fuck, it's our friends. But that's why it hurt, it's, 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 that's why it hurts me so much. The, the nigga, the Harry that I don't know, he had the forearm, that's crazy. He, he motherfucking run towards some shit. I, ooh, that's my bad spelling, sorry. Shoulders come back, he had to come back. So I gotta give it to the Harry that I don't know, sorry. Oh. This one? Yes, give it up for Harry right here. Great job, good win. Get the fuck out of here, it's past your curfew. Wow, that was awesome. That dude got called the N-word by a black guy tonight. He's feeling good. And a fist bump from you, so. Good night, dude. You guys ready to continue the fucking battles, man? Thank you for being here. Fives are good.
I don't want boys battling. I want girls battling. Let's fucking do it. Rebecca Jaffe and Hannah Belmont. Let's do it. Let's go. Good to see you. Have you two decided who's going first? Yes. Okay, Rebecca's going first. Seven jokes each. Everybody, one, two, three, rolls! Hannah looks like she'd leave a baby in a hot car. <laughs> if only she could afford a car. Or to keep the baby. Hell yeah. Keep it going for two girls, one sippy cup, everybody. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah. Rebecca, if you're here, who's Chris Hansen using to lure child predators, you know? Speaking of children, Hannah reminds me of a Barbie at a yard sale. Sticky, worn out, and you can pay 99 cents for her to play with you. <laughs> Hell yeah, raise it to a dollar. Uh, no, all right. Uh, Rebecca and I are both Jewish. Uh, hell yeah, Rebecca, Rebecca. Rosh Hashanah. That's what you yell, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, Rebecca looks like she'd bomb Palestinian children with glitter bombs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Hannah says that she's Jewish. I don't buy it, girl. You've been porked so much, you're not even kosher. <laughs> porked more than you. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, you. the only Jewish thing about you is your burning bush. Fuck yeah. I'll burn you later tonight. I don't know. Uh, no, <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, me and Rebecca both majored in theater. Uh, <laughs> Rebecca looks like she'd sp asked to speak to the manager at a theater camp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Hannah did major in theater too. She just forgot to take off the stage makeup. <laughs> yeah, Hannah's not scared of spiders. She just says, yay, more eyelashes. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Keep it going for Zoe Gay Chanel, everybody. Uh, <laughs> nah, dis despite that, Rebecca is straight, uh, unfortunately. But no, she, she does have a boyfriend. Her boyfriend is a photographer. Rebecca is his favorite model because it's the closest he'll get to shooting child porn. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> Are we gonna kiss? <laughs> At least my boyfriend has a job. You go to open mics and say, who wants it? <laughs> yeah, Hannah, she likes to try and show off her curves. Yeah, yeah but Hannah, the only thing thick about you is your discharge. <laughs> when Hannah says she's gonna get this bread, she's talking about another yeast infection. I'm allergic to gluten. Um, <laughs> Rebecca, you're, you look so conservative. You look like a youth group leader that took LSD and got really into dragon tails. <laughs> On a more serious note, <laughs> Hannah told me that her parents just got divorced, and I was surprised <laughs> to find out she grew up with a father figure. <laughs> hey, if you want to fuck my dad, just tell me. Uh... <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, Rebecca and I, we both have OCD. Uh, mine stands for obsessive compulsive disorder and hers stands for obnoxious cunt disorder. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. When I was a child, I lived, 
I lived in New Orleans in 2005. <laughs> and even so, I don't know, between Hannah and Hurricane Katrina, which one has a higher body count? And which one's wetter? Yeah, yeah, I guess you do have a lot in common. You're both wet, polluted biohazards, so. Bow, bow, bow. Hell yeah, all right. Rebecca and I both might be autistic. Um, Rebecca, Rebecca sounds like she'd be a voice actor in the next Inside Out if the emotion was autism. <laughs> And you look like if Lindsay Lohan melted. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hannah looks like the teen mom version of me. She also kind of looks like she was born with an ankle monitor. Rebecca looks like she thinks she can say the N-word, but only because it's an anagram of ginger. <laughs> Give it up for them, everybody. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. I have no idea. Wow. Hannah, do not come to school tomorrow. <laughs> Holy shit. One more time for that, everybody. What the fuck is... Oh, suicide hotline, get ready. Rovan Hill, what did you think of this girl on girl violence? That was a lot of lesbian discharge. Is this thing on? There was a lot of lesbian discharge there. It was a total destruction. Like, Rebecca totally destroyed Hannah. And then it was just like, yeah, we just got women going against women, which is why lesbian relationships don't work, because somebody going to get mad at somebody and start choking somebody. <laughs> Feels good. She got it with the, man, she was just hitting it with the, what is it, baby, Barbie, kosher, she's not kosher, eyelashes. It's just a whole lot of destruction, of woman on woman destruction, which y'all up with the patriarchy. <laughs> Come on now, everybody up with the patriarchy. Come on now, at some point it's gonna be a thing. Hashtag up with the patriarchy. No, I'm just playing. Thank nah, that's pretty good. Uh, Rebecca, she fucking was ridiculous. Thank you. Hannah did come back at the end. She had some good comebacks. But at the end, uh, Hannah just, uh, Rebecca just built a big ass lead. So I'll give it to Rebecca. Okay, Rebecca gets one. Thank you for that slam poem, Robon. <laughs> Stephanie. Oh my god, fucking laser focus battle from the both of you. I mean, it was so fucking cool to watch. Uh, <laughs> but in opposition to the last battlers, you guys look like you went to Diddy's mansion and chose not to leave. You know what I mean? <laughs> you guys were enjoying. Yeah, they, yeah, all right. They fist bump over that. They're like, we won, we won. <laughs> we love Diddy. I, uh, <laughs> they know like one song. Uh, okay. Oh my God. No, honestly, such an incredible battle from the both of you. I, yeah, I was I was writing all of the the, the the jokes that hit the hardest down, and Re and Rebecca got you by a few. But I mean, good job to the both of you. I'm giving it to Rebecca. Rebecca wins. Wow. Woo. Damn. And to think that I've had this video bookmarked for years already. <laughs> Joe, what did you think? Uh, I, I agree with uh, my colleagues here. It was great battle, great battle by two women who claim to be bisexuals but won't eat pussy. Um, the worst kind of bisexuals. But yeah, no, it was it was great. Uh, Hannah started so strong, and this is a lesson to the other battlers. You got to save something for the end. I mean, two girls, one sippy cup was fucking amazing. But overall, I I gotta agree. Rebecca just hit you a little harder and more consistently. Uh, and you kind of lost a little something out of the tank there at the end, but both of you were fantastic. That was great, but I got to give it to Rebecca. The female school shooter wins it. Give it up for her. Get out of here, you two. Once again, your curfew is up. Hell yeah. Her dad's picking her up. Very disappointed. Holy shit. Guys, 
this is all right. Dude, we're off to a fucking great start. And here's the thing. We love it when we make a, a debut on the show, and we got a fucking rookie battle coming up. Are you guys ready to see somebody's debut on Rose Battle Chicago? Let's do it. Give it up for the amazing Heather King and the debut of Luca Lago! Have you two decided who's going first? Uh, I yeah, Luca, ladies first. Ladies uh, first. Luca's going first. It's going to be five jokes each. Everybody, one, two, three. <laughs> Heather, how do you look like you both visit and protest a Planned Parenthood at the same time? Very fucking carefully, Luca. Very carefully. Uh, you guys, uh, Luca's been... <laughs> Luke has been super excited uh, to roast me. He actually works here at Zany's, but unless they start an open mic, this is the only way he's getting on this fucking stage. <laughs> and, and speaking of because you're here, who's going to be back home calling your mom a fucking bitch for getting the wrong Gogurt flavor? Real good, uh, real thick shady. Uh, okay, okay, okay. No, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Let him have his moment. <laughs> Uh, Heather's got the haircut style of a lesbian McDonald's night shift manager. <laughs> and and you, you could tell by the way her bangs are styled, she will let you know that the ice cream machine's broken. At least I can get a fucking haircut. The only thing left on Luca's body to cut is his fucking wrists. <laughs> I suggest uh, vertical. I heard going horizontal is just a cry for help. Noted. Okay. Uh, Heather looks like if Honey Boo Boo grew up and got addicted to Percocets. At least I'd have some fucking Percocets. That'd be nice. Uh, that's really all. Interesting, though, coming from uh, old fucking uh, Lyle Menendez over here. Uh Interesting. The thing is, is Luca actually does have a lot in common with the Menendez brothers. His parents uh, migrated here from Serbia, so that makes him a first generation of fucking disappointment. He's got a brother way hotter than he is, and now that he's bald, he waxes his nutsack because his dad likes the carpet to match the drapes. That was good. Uh, guys, Heather is on antidepressants. She's into horoscopes and anything that can remove her from any accountability. Shocker, I know. Uh, she blamed her recent dry spell due to Lexapro being on retrograde. Like I had a fucking dry spell. I think we can all agree the only time Luca's ever going to get laid is when he's laid to rest. <laughs> So let's just get that one out of the way. The thing is, though, is Luca is actually saving himself for marriage. Uh, he'll only dry hump his fleshlight until he can find a 24-inch wedding ring. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Guys, uh, Heather is 46 years old and will do anything to retain her youth. Um, just this summer, to feel like she was 20, uh, she got confused by having a brat summer with just guzzling down bratwurst. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, you walking pre -cum. I swear <laughs> to God. Like, if pre -cum could talk, it would sound like Luca's voice. That's kind of like what is going on up here. Here's the thing with Luca, though. He is a bit of a romantic. Um, he's been chasing the same girl since third grade. <laughs> Which is wild, because now that she's about to start fourth grade, she's got to do it in a whole different city. Whole different city! <laughs> All right. Uh, Heather looks like uh, if you ordered Billy Eilish off Timu. <laughs> Look at you, buddy. You're doing it. So cute. Last name's Long Car. Looks like he rides the fucking short bus, though. You know what I mean? Here's the thing about Luca. This is all uh, fun and games, but this is all coming from a 30-year-old car salesman who takes a fucking Uber to work. Luca couldn't sell a ketamine-laced bottle of baby oil to P. Diddy if his life fucking depended on it. Why don't you stick with what you're good at, baby? Just keep selling yourself short. <laughs> Give it up for them, everybody. Oh, my Ooh. God. Wow. Great work. Oh, my God. 
Man, that was awesome. You were like a zany art teacher up here. That was pretty cool. And you're dressed like her third grade student. What is going on with that? Shirt is wild. Wild decision fashion wise. Joe, this what, was... did, what did you think of divorce court up here, man? Oh, jeez. I mean, I thought Luca was a gay church leader. Um, youth, youth church leader, I got to add. Trying way too hard to fit in. It was a good one. There was some really good barbs between the two of them. It was fucking back and forth. You know, Mimi from the Drew Carey show. I'm glad you're around still. Um, <laughs> It was just, I do have to give it to uh, Heather. Heather, just slightly, it was so close. Heather, one vote. Stephanie. Yeah, um, wow, that's crazy. Luca, you look like Charlie Brown, and, uh, <laughs> and then, then Heather looks like the teacher you never get to see, but she's always just blabbing her mouth, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, that was a fun battle. I gotta agree. It was kind of like a little neck and neck. I feel like you guys both kind of um, were like evened out there. I, oh God, I don't know. I wanna, I wanna give it to Heather because you, you did have some um, good comebacks, and I really love your energy. But I, th I think I liked Luca's jokes just a little bit more. Just the content alone. I'm gonna give it to Luca, and uh, and I'm giving it to Rovan. No. Oh yeah, Luca gets yeah. one. Give it up for him. Comes down to the most stable no, 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 one on panel. I got scared. He uh, was trying to tie big ass shoes over here. I'm like, God damn, Will Chamberlain over here. Here's the thing. No, it, this wasn't even close. Heather was blowing Luca ass out. He was blowing. These are two of the most unfuckable comics in the scene. This is ridiculous. Who wants, like, damn, if they don't got each other, who do they have? I mean, honestly, this is bad. And here's the thing, women comics ain't funny, but Heather was like beating the shit out this motherfucker. She was destroying his ass. Was it the sweater? Here's the thing. Heather was blowing his ass out. Luca came back. He had some good uh, comebacks. But then Heather came back with the comebacks. When you come back with the comebacks, that's it. So I give it to Heather. Heather wins it. Give it up for her. Great try. Hey, warm time for Luca. First time on the show. Let's keep that energy moving. Let's keep it fucking going. Give it up for the amazing Mike Mazzella and Courtney Zelaste! Hell yeah, get their asses up here. This is gonna get creepy quick, man. Have you decided who's going first? I am. Courtney's going first. Seven joke seats, everybody. One, two, three! Rose! All right, I asked Mike how many black girlfriend jokes I was allowed to do, and we came to a three-fifths compromise. Oh, uh, that's good. You learned fractions. That's cute. Uh, keep it going for premature baby spice, everybody. Uh, no one knows who that is. <laughs> Speaking of babies, uh, when Courtney was a baby, her parents entered her into a baby crawling race at the mall, and she won it? No, that's not true. I lost. Oh, well... You know, she did have an advantage over everybody else. Uh, she was chasing after her parents as they ran to the parking lot. Mm. All right. Thank you, Puerto Rican JD Vance. <laughs> <laughs> All those childless gato ladies out there. Mike is not Puerto Rican, but he is a lawyer. He's actually a terrible lawyer and a terrible comic. He's so bad at both that actually all of his, co his clients get booked more than he does. Wow. That's funny. Uh, let's see here. Courtney Zelazny. Zelazny, is that your last name or the name of the antidepressants that you're on? <laughs> Side effects of Zelazny may include grifting off of your parents, never getting invited on a second date, and just generally being a total bitch. Yeah, but at least I have health insurance to pay for it. All right. Um, <laughs> That's a good point. Mike is in a play about vampires, and he's actually a natural in it. Guys, he's so good, because he already sucks so much. No. Oh. That was really, it was a good pun. The fuck are you wearing? You look like eat, pray, love, calling the cops on black kids. Okay, that's pretty oh, rich coming from you, Freddie Mercury's gay cousin, Freddie Uranus. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> Courtney, these people do not want to buy Herbalife from you. Stop asking. Uh, I don't think you understand. I don't need a job. My parents are rich. Oh no, I, we'll get to that. Um, Courtney is addicted to Adderall, uh, but it's cool. She has a prescription for it because she has ADD. And those are the only double D's she's ever going to have. 
not like you'd ever see them. Uh, Mike is an actor. You may have seen him in the Untouchables porn parody, The Unfuckables. <laughs> That's crazy, considering you haven't been late since November of last year. Woo, uh, you're sober. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, thing about sex, he puts the sub in sub sandwich. Oh, that was good. It's more like a hero. Um, Courtney, uh, a lot of people tell Courtney that she looks like Taylor Tomlinson. See, the difference is Taylor hosts a show called After Midnight, and for Courtney, After Midnight is just the only time she can get any guy to text her back. <laughs> that didn't land because you already said I haven't gotten laid since November, yeah. <laughs> which is true. Uh, my <laughs> Mike looks like he learned magic just to make his sexual assault allegations disappear. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I can't believe I'm getting roasted by Squidward in drag right now. This is crazy. Um, Clearly I'm Sandy Cheeks. <laughs> like, obviously I'm Sandy Cheeks. Courtney uh, claims to be a woman of color despite looking like this. Um, but it's, it's actually true. She is a quarter Mexican. And her tits are Japanese. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, Ray Roe Monitor, his search history. <laughs> All right. Uh, Whatever I, you say, Raquel Dolezal. Only one person got it. I appreciate it. That's. <laughs> All right. Mike's nose is so big. How big is it? Mike's nose is so big that when he does coke, it's not snow, it's an avalanche. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I, I want to do one of these too. Okay. Uh, Courtney is so spoiled. How spoiled is she? She's 27 years old and she still gets a weekly allowance from her parents of $500. It's okay? monthly. And if you think that that's a lot, you should see what they pay the producers to keep booking her on shows. <laughs> Anything Not to enough. keep her out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> Mike wouldn't know. He never gets booked. Uh, Mike should parents. be a cop, not a lawyer, the way he shoots a full load of black women. <laughs> god damn it. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Courtney, you look like the Hawk Tua girl if she only spit on homeless people. Um, you know. You know, a lot of people say that Courtney doesn't have a chin, but that's impossible, all right? Otherwise, what would her boss's balls slap against every time she asks for a raise? Oh, shit. <laughs> I was told that was my last joke, but if you don't want to do that, yeah, then... We can uh, do one more. Sure, let him go. All right. All right. Everyone give it up for Mike for passing the bar. Uh, it's not a big accomplishment since it was on the floor, but he gets so little applause as it is. And so that does that joke. Amazing. Uh, Courtney really likes to wear tennis outfits, but she doesn't play tennis. Uh, she wishes that she was in Challengers, but everybody else wishes she was in The Challenger. Okay. Nice. Nice. No, not something? worth the last one, huh? No, no, give no, it up for them, everybody. <laughs> Holy shit. Amazing, keep it going for them. Wow. Oh no, that was our that. I mean, I sure I mean we could do one more. Yeah. Yeah, they're unlikable. That's the whole battle. Okay, do you guys decide the terribleness? Do you want to talk? Okay, one more. Do you have one more? I got one more, yeah. One more? Uh yeah, I can figure one out. All right, figure it out. Let's do it. Uh, I'll go. Yeah. Uh, so like I said, Courtney has not been laid since November of last year, and she is a quarter Mexican. So that means she doesn't flick her bean, she refries it. Uh, Mike and his girlfriend love to go to Renaissance fairs because it reminds them of a time when their relationship was kinky and interesting. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's interracial. <laughs> Yeah, did that wow. do it for you, Ravon? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. W once again, not worth it at all. I didn't ask for it. <laughs> two for two. I did not ask for this. It's all good. Uh, Stephanie, yeah. what, did, what did you think about whatever this was? I think this is why you should cut your kids off at 18. I think this is, <laughs> this is, this is also the perfect uh, uh, example of why men should stop talking and women should stop interrupting. <laughs> I, 
Uh, okay, sorry guys. You guys really <laughs> like that battle? Uh, no, I mean, I, uh, I mean, yeah, it was, um, it was a good battle. You guys had good jokes, but the the energy was weird and it freaked me out a little bit. Um, <laughs> I think I'd rather see that vampire play you guys were talking about. Oh, you should. Friday nights at the Annoy at no, 7 p.m. It's no, a great show. No. Oh, don't plug your shitty thing here. Uh, yeah. no, no one's coming to see that. <laughs> um, I, 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 uh, I don't know. I felt like the jokes were, were very even. I'm going to give uh, Mike the win for the Hawk to a joke. I really liked that one. Hell yeah. Give it up for Mike. One vote. Hell yeah. That was a great joke. Very funny. Joe Kogan. Yeah, uh, God, Jesus. Um, that was uh, that was a battle. Uh, you guys, you guys were present, and we thank you for that. Um, I was worried the mustache was going to come back, and then I saw Mike with it, and I'm like, all right, we're good. Um, yeah, dude, it's, you definitely look like the white guy black woman dates to piss off her ex boyfriend. Um, so that's something, I suppose. Uh, Courtney, you're rocking that slutty kindergarten teacher thing, and I like it. Um, I was thinking maybe that's why you'd win, but I do have to give it to Mike, that Hawk Tua joke, because that was definitely the one. That was okay, the one. Mike wins it. Give it up for Mike Mazzella. Yeah. Good job. Despite the shirt, he takes the win, but I want to get final thoughts from Ravon. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, same, pretty much the same thing. Courtney was, it was, it was, it was a good ass comeback, bro. Courtney was blowing his ass out. Like he was just, she was just destroying him. Like, ah, women again, ah. <laughs> but then Mike just came back at the end. He just started hitting it with the comebacks. Comebacks is good. And then he won in the final round. Fuck it. So I had to give it to Mike. He came back. He won. That was a good ass comeback. Buffalo Bills, baby. Bills. Buffalo Bills, indeed. Bills. Give it up for these two, everybody, coming up here. Good job, both of you. Nice. The sexual energy is palpable between them. That is awesome. No one wants to watch it, though. Now. Let's fucking keep it going. You, you guys still with us, huh? We got two more for you, man. Guys, keep the energy going for the amazing Chris Walker and Matt Torres! Hell oh, yeah, man. Woo! Have you decided who's going first? Okay. Music's late, but that's fine. We'll ignore that. They're on stage. Okay, Chris is going first. It's going to be five jokes each. Everybody, one, two, three! <laughs> Matt is an overweight veteran who suffers from PTSD. Come on now. But by PTSD, I mean pizza, tacos, sandwiches, donuts. <laughs> You're welcome for fighting for your freedom. Uh, that was... He hates the troops. Um, <laughs> Chris looks like he referees women's basketball. <laughs> I mean, that's a good part-time job. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> uh, Matt has a lot of sleepless nights. And it's not because he was in the Iraq war. It's because of sleep apnea. <laughs> Chris looks like dollar store Drake. <laughs> Matt looks like Mexican Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> now it's time for your personal business. <laughs> Chris just got a vasectomy. <laughs> so he's not just shooting blanks in his comedy anymore. <laughs> My body, my choice. Uh, <laughs> Matt's wife never comes to any of his shows, mainly because she doesn't want to get disappointed by another five-minute performance. <laughs> I'll give him that. She's not here. What a bitch. <laughs> I got a surprising one for you. Chris is black. <laughs> A lot of his comedy is about uh, how he's not black enough. That's like a lot of his jokes. Uh, well, w one of them is... Um, <laughs> I'm going to make sure I say this right. Uh, <laughs> about how he doesn't think he's black enough to say the N-word. And I've heard him say it. 
And he shouldn't. <laughs> you see how I could easily really fuck myself up? <laughs> Matt, we said that together. Uh, it was worse. She let me. I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> Matt's life is like a sitcom. His wife is way too hot for him. The jokes aren't funny, and the laughs are fake. I guess you could call him Latin King of Queens. <laughs> Chris's girlfriend is here. <laughs> Everyone give it up for her. <laughs> That's what a supportive spouse is like. Uh, they live together. They've been together 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. They have a child together. But he thinks it's too big of a commitment to get married. <laughs> so for someone who's scared to say the N-word, he sure does act like one. <laughs> Now we like the racism. <laughs> Give it up for them, everybody. Oh, my God. Great job. Great job. Oh, man. You guys are reaching pretty far back on some of those, man. Not as far back as that hairline, but pretty far back. <laughs> pretty far. That was great. Um, I, I thought it was pretty fun. Uh, Ravon, what did you think? I think, like, these, both of these niggas look dressed the same. <laughs> Did y'all did y'all uh, predetermine that shit? We gonna be look bad and say bad jokes at the same time. It's pretty good. Here's the thing. Um, it was pretty close, but then the N-word shit at the end with Matt, he just closed it out. It was pretty close, but I gave it to Matt because yeah, what he had the Mexican shit, he had the five minute Perkins says Aladdin King or Queen. That was pretty good. Got his ass. <laughs> Got his ass. Cause y'all look the same. But yeah, at the end, uh, Matt closed it out with the N-word shit. That was pretty good. I give it to Matt. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, solid battle. Uh, they, it is weird though. I didn't like these two battling because you guys just look so much alike. I agree with Ro. It's like it's a tortilla. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> these guys shouldn't be on stage. They should be like yelling at their girlfriends in Humble Park, right? Like. <laughs> And it's in, and she just won't listen, you keep saying, but she's listening and she's not happy. Um, this was a tough one. It was very, very neck and neck, but I got to agree with Ro. Matt came in at the buzzer with that last bit, so I give it to him. Awesome, Matt. Okay, Matt with two, he wins. So give it up for Matt, everybody. Very nice. Yeah. Final thoughts from Stephanie Robertson. What did you think? Arguing with your, you guys look like two gay uncles. Like, you guys look like. <laughs> Two, two, two gay tios, sorry, my bad, two gay tios. Uh, <laughs> That's good. And I'm giving it to Matt. We're giving it to Matt. Okay, Matt that. wins it, but give it up for both of these guys. Good job, man. Holy fuck. Are you guys having as much fun as we're having? This is a fucking great night, man. Happy Rosh Hashanah, I think. I'm pretty sure. Uh, real quick, uh, before we get into our headlining battle uh, of the evening, I want to give it a round of applause for Zanies for having us. Can you please give it up for Zanies? I mean, just amazing. Uh, we love that they're here. Uh, you know, they're, they're doing a great thing. If you guys, uh, if any of your friends that wanted to be here isn't here, uh, we post every show we do on Patreon, uh, and that's where you get to see uh, all the N-words that, uh, <laughs> that we don't post online uh, and that you guys apparently really like. So, um, you know, they'll be there uh, after the show. We're selling uh, shit there, uh, some merch, and that's pretty much it. You guys ready for your fucking headlining battle of the evening? Listen, motherfuckers, you know how this works. It's the last battle of the evening. Are you ready for your headlining battle of the evening one more time? Let's go! Battle, 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 battle. Everybody, Gabriel Aviso and Max Sorens! Good job. Okay, guys. Have you decided who's going first? Yeah, I'll go first. Gabriel's going first. It's seven jokes seats for the last time tonight. One, two, three, Rose! Hey, Max, if you're here, who's telling 15-year-old girls that they're way too mature for their age? 
Yo, Max looks like he dates teenage girls, not because he's a creep, but because they have the same reading level as him. Gabe looks like he dates teenage girls because he was just at their quinceanera, so. He had so much trouble saying that. I kind of nailed it, I thought, so. Gabe, uh, growing up, Gabe's parents actually had to pick fruit. Um, and by that, I mean Gabe is adopted. <laughs> dude. Oh, Max is so mean, dude. What a mean thing to say, dude. Max is so buff, dude. Max got all of his muscles from pushing down all those gay thoughts. <laughs> dude. That's why he's so strong, dude. <laughs> Fucking gay. <laughs> Gabe, uh, Gabe gets really nerdy about music genres. Like he'll be like, "That's not punk. That's soft core new revival punk." <laughs> it's like, no, dude, that's not a personality. <laughs> Dude, fucking mean, dude. Max looks like his safe words are, do you know who my father is? Hey, Gabe's safe words are, is modelo time! <laughs> oh, shit, dude. dude. Max looks like he puts pre-workout in girls' drinks, so... <laughs> Dude, so they stay awake. <laughs> Dude, Max, Max goes down on his girlfriend and says things like, hey, can you shut the fuck up? I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> Max only eats pussy if it tastes like a protein bar. <laughs> Gabe, uh, Gabe uh, as a child, he was actually molested by his uncle. I know, right? Shocker, wow. Uh, <laughs> no way. <laughs> Max looks like an uncle. <laughs> uh, Gabe, uh, Gabe actually uh, lost his apartment this summer. He had to couch surf for a few months. I know, right? Can you imagine if this guy looking more homeless? That's crazy. <laughs> Dude, Max looks like if a TJ Maxx fucked the Coles. <laughs> and his face, and his face looks like if a dude named TJ fucked a dude named Cole. <laughs> Cause he's fucking gay <laughs> and strong though. He's super strong, dude. So, uh. <laughs> You're so fun, dude. You are actually gay though. That's crazy. Gabe, uh, G every time Gabe rings the bell on his adult bicycle, um, <laughs> an angel gets sexually harassed by a hot topic manager. <laughs> Yo, Max loves tidy whities uh, That's what he calls the teenage girls that he dates. <laughs> oh, oh, Gabe. Uh, Gabe, uh, he likes to go to skate parks and go, <laughs> the old stomping grounds. <laughs> and then an eight-year-old girl goes, mommy, the bad man is back. <laughs> Hey, Max doesn't talk like this. He's just trying to impress his friends, dude. Max, Max looks like a proud boy who shows up to meetings and's like, hey guys, can we not be racist tonight and just like vibe out? <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to write a joke about Gabe's stand-up, but I couldn't think of anything, because I swear to God, every time I hear Gabe talk, this is all I hear. <laughs> Give it, up, give, me yeah. on. give it up for them, everybody. Holy fuck, man. <laughs> ah, what a bunch of cunts. So good. That was so much fucking fun. Rovan, what did you think about these guys? I've been overseas in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> And I've had some tight Asian pussy. This was about as tight as that. This was about as tight as Asian pussy overseas. <laughs> There's two what? women filming him right now it saying. Hey, 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 man. I'm not a, what do they call it? A, woman, a man that hates women. Here's the thing. You know what it's called. Don't worry about it. It's called Ravon Hill. Yeah, don't worry about it. 
Dude, this was tight as fuck. Here's the thing. Gabe jumped out once again. The gay thoughts, bam. Do you know who your father is? Bam. Everything. But the fucking Max at the fucking end just pulled ahead by a second. Just like the, the last joke, the last adult bicycle, the last old shit that he had. He just kind of pulled ahead just by a little bit. This was one of the tightest, best battles that I've seen in a long time. This was pretty good, so tight, but I got to give it to Max. Max, one vote. Yeah. yeah, yeah, what Rovan said. Uh, no, I, uh, incredible battle. That was so fucking fun to watch. Um, fuck, <laughs> you guys do look like you both think you can say the N word, though. You guys do <laughs> both look like that. I, um, I, man, Gabe's, oh, fuck, it's, it's so close, but Gabe, you, you had such great jokes, uh, the mature joke, the gay joke, the pre workout joke, but I think Max just kind of, snuck under there a little bit with some comebacks with the quinceanera, the picking the fruit, the modelo time, and then he hit you, he hit you with the mariachi music at the end, and I gotta go, I gotta go, Max, I gotta go, Max. Max wins it. Yeah, that was uh, a sick battle. I mean, holy shit, that was one of the best I've seen. It was really tough, it was back and forth. I mean, you got Cocaine Jose versus, uh, <laughs> The poster boy for I'm gonna beat rape charges. Um, well, who's who? <laughs> See, exactly. This was a tough fucking battle, dude. This was a hard one for that reason. Um, it was so fucking close. I, I, I'm gonna say Gabe just so it's not a clean sweep because it really shouldn't. Gabe gets there, a that was that good. Because he's a beast. Give it, it up for Gabe. Amazing. This is adorable. Get the fuck out of here, guys. Give it up for them. This has been Rose Battle Chicago. We